previously I spoke about the connection between the mile, the moon, the earth, the sun, and the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. And I hinted at the fact that there are many more what seem to be amazingly coincidental numbers and measurements. Um, I'm going to go over a few more of them here. One of the things about the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt is it's considered the one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It's the most precisely constructed pyramid and the largest in Egypt. So singling it out is not, I wouldn't say cherry picking, even though some people who have commented have accused me of cherry picking. Um, one of the things about the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt is um, called squaring the circle. And that's a geometrical thing whereby the pyramid represents a sphere. And that means that the height of it, which is 280 Egyptian royal cubits, um, represents the radius of a circle or a sphere. And the base perimeter, um, each base length is 440 Egyptian royal cubits. Um, so four of them are 1760. And that represents the circumference. So if you imagine the circumference and you uh, stretch it, well, you don't stretch it, but you, you turn it from a circle into a square, um, then that represents the shape of the Great Pyramid. The angle of the slope is, I think, 51 degrees and 51 or 52 arc minutes. Maybe it's 52, I can't remember the exact figure. Um, I've drawn out a diagram to represent um, this. I don't know how, hopefully you can see this reasonably clearly. Um, so the thing about that is um, the, the ratio is interesting and important. And um, if you uh, take the height, which is 280 Egyptian royal cubits, and you divide that by 20, you get 14. And then you do the same thing with the base length, you get 22. So I've, that's what I've marked out on here. Um, 14 units high and 22 units across the base. So if you then draw out the, um, the, the center point at the base of the pyramid, use that as the center and then draw a circle, um, it crosses three units away from the top, from the apex and that represents the Earth, and then you use the apex to draw out another circle, that represents the Moon. And that is, um, to me, seems like an amazing coincidence. Um, either the builders, the designers of the Great Pyramid, knew what, exactly what the size of the Earth and the Moon were, or it's just a complete coincidence that one geometrical represent representation of um, a sphere happens to incorporate the ratio between the Earth and the Moon. But because the Egyptians, we know the units of measurement the Egyptians used, um, you can sort of scale up and scale down and you, you come, you, you arrive at pi, which, or a close approximation of pi, which is 22 over 7. And that is basically two base lengths um, divided by the height. So two base length is 880 cubits divided by the height is 280, which is exactly the same as 22 over 7, which gives you 3.142, which is a pretty close approximation of pi. The actual number is 3.14159265358979 and so on. Um, there doesn't seem to be an end, you know, billion, it's, I, 
I think it's an irras irrational number. I'm not too up to speed on that, but pi just goes on and on and on and on. But for you know construction purposes and anything you might be able to draw geometrically on a piece of paper, 22 over 7 is pretty damn close. So um, another hint, I think, that the Egyptians did know um, what the diameter of the Earth and the Moon were is, you will heard me mention previously in the last video, um, if you divide the Moon into th diameter into three units and the Earth diameter into 11 units, you get a processionally significant number, 720. If you take the height of the pyramid and the base length, that's 280, and add them together, 280 plus 440 is 720. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. But 720 miles um, is a third of the diameter of the Moon and an eleventh of the diameter of the Earth. And then there's one other thing which to, seems to connect the whole thing to the mile. If you multiply the height by 11, you get one mile. If you multiply the base length by 7, you also get a mile. And it's, you know, to well within 1% of accuracy. It's not an absolutely exact thing, but it's really, really close. So, why am I interested in these things, you might wonder? Um, basically, I think that our civilization is precarious. Um, we are wreaking untold havoc on the natural world. Um, it seems, from a, um, from many perspectives, that you know our civilization is doomed to failure. Um, population is expanding out of control, and resource depletion is going on out of control, and. Um, when you look at the ancient Egyptian civilization, it's continued in a relatively stable state for several thousand years. Um, it's hard to imagine that our civilization can do the same. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to suggest that modern medicine and modern technology are in and of themselves bad things, but I don't think we, as a species, use them particularly wisely. So, looking to a civilization which was, was able to um, create amazing megalithic structures with incredible precision um, makes me wonder, well, maybe they knew some things which we don't. And to dismiss all of these things as total coincidence and irrelevant and unimportant, I think, is a little bit short-sighted. Anyway. That's all I'm going to say for now, so thank you for watching and see you next time.